Going backstage in a WWE game has historically been one of the most entertaining things to do in a WWE game, especially in the PS2 era of WWE games where fights could literally go outside the arena and all sorts of chaos could go down. Join us now as WrestleGamer looks at the history of backstage areas in WWE games by going to every backstage area in WWE games. Uh, just to confirm, we're only featuring WWE games that allow us to go from the ring to the backstage area, so some games may not count. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're the first to know when we upload a video. Now it was all the way back in the very first Smackdown in 2000 on the PS1, where we had the first attempt to have a backstage area in a WWE game and they did a pretty solid job. To get to the backstage areas, you'd have to simply go up the ramp until it allowed you to progress to the top of the stage and from there, you can progress to the top of the stage to the backstage area. As this was the peak time of the Attitude Era, you would see areas that you wouldn't see in a current WWE 2K game such as a boiler room and a kitchen. Now, it might sound strange now, but at the time, these were actual areas where we'd see fights in the WWE go to, especially during the Hardcore Era. A SmackDown 2 would then be released in the same year as the first SmackDown, but they didn't just port over the same backstage area. It got a full redesign with all the old arenas from before and the addition of new arenas like the office, bar, locker room, and even being able to go outside for the first time. Getting to the backstage area is the same as the first SmackDown, with there being two separate areas for the lower stage and the upper stage. No Mercy on the N64 would also get the upgrade of a backstage area that were not in previous games of WrestleMania 2000. The backstage area was much smaller than the PS1 due to the limits of the Nintendo 64 compared to the PS1, but they did a great job of what they could do. Getting backstage would be similar to the PS1 games with two different areas for the stage, but the backstage would be just one big hallway and four doors, each one leading to a classic area that you'd see on WWE TV at the time, especially with all the hardcore title 24-7 antics. The four areas are the locker room, boiler room, bar and parking lot. And then the Royal Rumble on the Dreamcast deserves a quick mention, well, kinda. This is because you can't physically go backstage from the stage as it's impossible to even leave the ring in this game, but you can go backstage during random events and matches. Whilst having a match in the Royal Rumble, you might see the screen go to black and, and the match will change to a random backstage area. Now you do have no control over it, but technically you are going from the ring to a backstage area in the game. The game actually features six backstage areas including the entrance area, parking lot, boiler room, kitchen, corridor and sometimes a steel cage appears which isn't really a backstage area but still a cool feature nonetheless. And then moving on to the PS2 generation and Smackdown Just Bring It, it would be the most ambitious attempt at backstage areas due to the increased power of the PlayStation 2. No longer is the ramp and stage two separate areas, you can just freely move around and walk towards the stage to move to the backstage. And once you get there, you will see an incredible difference from the PS1 games to the PS2 games as backstage areas will now wide open areas with the ability to take the fight to different floors in the main hallway. The new wide open backstage areas are not just limited to just inside the arena either, the outside areas have also been massively expanded. No longer were outside fights limited to just a small section, you can go all the way towards Times Square in New York where the WWF New York restaurant was located and fight inside there. And just bring it showed just, just what could be possible in the WWE game's backstage area and the next game would even expand on that much further. A Smackdown Shut Your Mouth would completely redesign the backstage area once again, with the area now looking more how it looks like when fans enter a building to watch the show. Like the previous games, there are, however would be a WWE twist to it with all the classic arenas showing up once again like offices, boiler rooms and the parking lot. The biggest change to Shut Your Mouth Backstage is the increase in interactive backstage spots. So no longer was the backstage area just a static background, there would be things to interact with and you could throw a wrestler towards an exploding boiler which will cause him to go flying into the air. The most well known and legendary addition to the backstage area of Smackdown Shut Your Mouth was the train station and the ability to actually take a fight onto a train and have the train to take you to New York so you could once again invade WWE's restaurant that was once there. The Undertaker is not getting a great response from the crowd here. 
Moving on to SmackDown, here comes the Payne's backstage area. It would also be well known for being the most chaotic and interactive backstage area ever. It was also known for unfortunately being the last WWE game to allow us to go backstage for over 14 years. Yeah, that means that the entire PS3 generation of WWE games had skipped being able to go backstage from the ring, although they were replaced with backstage brawls. But anyway, here comes the pain just went wild with what you could do with your opponent backstage. You could grab a motorcycle or whilst there grab your opponent and take him for a ride around the parking lot. Or if that isn't crazy enough for you, you can go to the Times Square and climb a helicopter to jump off or even jump off WWE's building in New York. The insane backstage possibilities were endless in SmackDown Here Comes the Pain. So after Here Comes the Pain, 14 years would pass and the next game that would allow us to go backstage was WWE 2K17 and things had changed in a big way. 2K17 was way more simulation based than the previous games so the backstage area had more of an accurate look of what a backstage would actually look like if you were backstage. Still it was fun to take the fights here and do some OMG moments in the locker room or office but it did feel like it was missing something. WWE 2K18 would change the brand new backstage design by expanding on it and adding new areas like more offices, a catering area and a parking lot area. This new expansion came with more of the craziness that you'd expect seeing after playing PS2 WWE games as 2K18 allowed us to jump off forklifts and trailers and use the cars around like the parking lot as a weapon. This would be the last update for a while as 2K19 and 2K20 would have the exact same design for the backstage area and many began to get bored of the same area that used to be changed in every single WWE game back in the PS1 and PS2 generation. So 2K actually listened to the players and came up with a brand new design for 2K22. 2K22's complete redesign of the backstage area changed it into being just one big connected backstage that has all the areas in one. It was also the first time since the PS2 generation of WWE games that there was a second floor to take the fight to with it being possible to climb up the scaffolding and fight on the second area. If you damaged the rails enough then you could also throw your opponent off the second floor down to the bottom. It was a decent redesign but it lacked the interactivity of previous games. No longer could you electrocute rivals with a breaker box or do a finisher on top of a limo. It was pretty much just as basic as it gets when it came to interactivity. Now with 2K23, some slight changes to the backstage area came as the design is pretty much the same although this time there have been interactive elements added. You could throw opponents into a spotlight or you could use cars to get extra damage on opponents. As you can imagine however, it doesn't come close as to what we could get in the PS2 era of WWE games backstage. Would you guys like for them to go back to the PS2 era of backstage areas in 2K24? Let us know in the comments down below. I'll see you next time with some more wrestling video game content.